The Kraken X series from NZXT is designed to provide top tier cooling performance, advanced RGB lighting effects, and intuitive installation. Today we're taking a look at the $179 X73 to see how it handles one of the most powerful desktop CPUs on the market right now, the Ryzen 9 3950X. Inside the box we get a user's manual and installation guide, three 120mm PWM fans, mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD sockets, a three-way fan splitter, a breakout cable with a SATA connector, micro USB power cable, and the AIO unit. If you're already familiar with NZXT AIOs, then the design of the X73 is probably not going to surprise you too much, because it looks nearly identical to the previous generation, but with a few notable tweaks and improvements. The most obvious change is the newly designed rotatable infinity mirror that's much larger than the last gen. This design lets you rotate the face of the water block in 30 degree increments, and that can really help with compatibility because it allows for the faceplate to be oriented upright regardless of how the hoses are situated in the build. So this can really help where you've got a build where space is really restricted or limited due to the layout of the motherboard heat sinks or the type of case that you're using or something like that. The other significant change is the pump, and you can't see it because it's tucked away inside the water block, but it is supposed to be an upgraded version with better and more efficient cooling performance and also lower noise by offering a wider RPM range of 800 to 2800 versus the older version which had 1600 to 2800 on the X72. The water block measures about 80 millimeters in diameter and 55 millimeters high and that's pretty substantial. It's pretty large and it takes up a lot of space around the CPU socket. The housing's made of plastic with a circular copper cold plate fastened to the bottom with eight stainless steel screws and a thin layer of thermal paste comes pre-applied and ready for installation. The radiator dimensions are 394 millimeters long, 121 millimeters wide, and 27 millimeters thick. It's made of aluminum and it looks like it has pretty good fin density. And NZXT stamped their name into the side to add a little aesthetic flair and branding. The tubes connecting the radiator to the water block are 400 millimeters long and they're made from what NZXT calls ultra low evaporation rubber. And they're also covered by a nylon braided sleeve for some added strength and protection. They connect to the water block with 90 degree rotatable bends, but at the radiator side, the connection's fixed, which somewhat limits maneuverability during installation. The X73 comes with three 120 millimeter fans with an operating speed of 500 to 2000 RPM, an airflow rating of 73 CFM, and a max static pressure of 2.93 millimeters H2O. And they use fluid dynamic bearings and have four pin PWM connections. The cooler's compatible with a ton of different sockets from both Intel and AMD, including STR4 for Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. But keep in mind on that platform, you're gonna need a separate bracket that you'll have to get from NZXT. And also the cooler's cold plate won't fully cover the Threadripper I IHS. Installation's pretty easy and straightforward with the provided instructions. To get the cooler installed on my 3950X, I removed the stock cooler mounts from the motherboard and replaced them with the four AM4 standoffs that come with the X73, and these screw right onto the stock backplate. Next, we need to remove the Intel mounting bracket from the water block and install the AMD bracket. Since the block comes with thermal paste pre-applied, all we have to do is position it over the CPU and secure it into place with the four mounting screws. The fans screw onto the radiator with four screws each and can be mounted in either a push or pull configuration. They can either connect right to your motherboard's PWM headers separately or you can chain them together with the included splitter. Next we'll connect the power and the breakout cables to the water block and also the motherboard and power supply, and the pump tack cable can plug right into the CPU or AIO fan header right on the motherboard. Now we're going to jump into the NZXT CAM software on the computer and see what kind of options are available for configuration and customization. The software is broken down into a few different categories that you can see over here on the left hand side and we're going to take a quick look at some of the more important ones. So right away we've got the PC monitoring tab and in here we've got all sorts of different information about our system's hardware configuration and you can click on all this stuff and check out even further details if you want to. But one of the things that I want to mention on this page is that the temperature reported for the CPU in this CAM software does not align with what I'm getting in AMD Ryzen Master which I consider to be the most accurate temperature reporting program for Ryzen 3000 series based CPUs. So for whatever reason, my 3950X in the CAM software is getting reported like 50 degrees at idle, sometimes 45, stuff like that. And then over in the Ryzen master utility, that can be like 20 degrees less than that sometimes. So I'm not sure what's causing that, but um, I wouldn't rely on these temperatures too much on current generation and maybe even future generation Ryzen CPUs, at least until that gets addressed by NZXT. Next, we've got more system specs information, and this is just basically a list of all the hardware plugged into the motherboard. And then we've got the lighting tab. The Kraken X series are known for having one of the best RGB lighting implementations on the market, and it's for good reason. There's a lot of different customizable effects here that look pretty good. You can come down here and control the ring separately from the logo, which I think is pretty cool. But let's just start things off with the ring and see what we can do. 
So if we expand the ring channel, we can see all the customization options available to us. This drop down menu is full of all sorts of different presets. Some of them are pretty crazy and colorful and they give you a little bit more control after you select one where you can change the speed or the direction of the effect and stuff like that. And then if you really want to go crazy with customization, if you pick one of the ones that offer you um, some advanced settings, so let's just pick breathing for example, then this customize LED colors button shows up. And if we click on that, that gives us full control over all eight LEDs on the water block. All you have to do to set these up is click on them and select a color. So you can go all the way around and pick custom colors and really come up with a custom setting that's gonna be unique to your system. And I really like that. I think this is a really cool implementation that kind of sets this above other coolers when it comes to the RGB lighting. Let's go ahead and put this back to one of the normal presets and we'll just let that go. And then let's move down to the logo. So if we expand this lighting channel, you can see we can take control of the logo that's in the middle of the RGB light ring. And again, we've got all sorts of different presets right here. So we can change that and it'll work independently of that light ring. So we can have two different effects going on um, on the water block at the same time, which I think is pretty cool. So you can have a rainbow effect going on on the light ring up here, and then you can set this to your CPU temperature, for example, and configure the colors and then keep an eye on how your CPU is doing. So there's a lot of customization available here in terms of lighting. Now, if we go over to cooling, we can actually customize the way the cooler performs. So if we go down here and we click on pump, it opens up a menu for us where we have some presets. So you can see how the curve changes on the graph as I select these. So there's silent, performance, custom where you can make a custom curve or just fixed where it's a straight line across the entire graph here, no matter what the temperature is for the CPU. So if I come here to custom, I just had mine set at 75% and there's a reason for that. And you're gonna see that in a minute when we jump into the performance testing. But what I really wanted to mention here is that it's really easy to, to just select a preset or to come up with your own curve and your own design here. So you can find a balance of cooling performance and noise that's really gonna work for you. And it's really easy to make these changes and everything just gets applied as soon as you make the change. You don't have to go down and worry about clicking an apply button or anything like that. For the performance testing, I've got the X73 installed on a Ryzen 9 3950X running stock speeds and voltages in an Asus X570 Strix motherboard with 32 gigabytes of G-Skill memory at 3600 megahertz and a GTX 1080 Ti video card. Everything's mounted to a Thermaltake Core P3 that you can see right over my shoulder. It's an open air case. That way we don't run into any airflow restrictions or limitations that could affect our results. And each of the tests that I'm gonna show you consist of two back-to-back -back runs of Cinebench R20 and maximum temperatures are being recorded using a AMD Ryzen Master software. In the first set of results, we've got the pump speed fixed at 25% while we run some tests at three different fan speeds. With the pump running at such a low setting, maxing out the fans can only manage to shave off a couple of degrees at best. And you'd never want to run a configuration like this because the fans produce an insane amount of noise at 100%. And we'll see that in just a second when we get to the noise testing. Moving the pump speed up to 50% results in a massive reduction in the reported temperatures at every fan speed tested. These results seem to suggest that it's not a great idea to run the pump below 50% of its rated performance. Ramping the pump speed up to 75% increases the cooling performance again, but nowhere near as much as the jump that we saw from 25 to 50%. Moving up to 75% from 50% only shaved off a few extra degrees in each of these tests. At 100% pump speed, we see the maximum potential of the X73 with very impressive temperatures once the fans approach 50%. And keep in mind Cinebench R20 maxes out the 3950X, so to cool this 16 core CPU to 57 or 58 degrees during these tests is an unbelievably good result. With the fans locked in at 25%, I scaled the pump from 25 to 100% speed and measured the sound levels. At 25 to 75%, sound levels are really tolerable without much noticeable noise coming from the pump. As soon as you go above 75% though, there's a sudden jump and the pump becomes noticeable. And it's really not a good sound that you're going to want to hear all day. This shows that the fans are really what's contributing to the overall noise here. They're audible even at 25% and they become obscenely loud as soon as you approach the upper limit or 100% speed. But the good news is that the testing shows that the pump speed has a much greater impact on performance than the fan speeds. And I found that running the pump at around 75% and the fans at about 25 to 30% provides a really good balance of cooling performance and noise. So the Kraken X73 is an absolute beast of an AIO. It's capable of cooling the Ryzen 9 3950X with ease and with a lot of room left over for some manual overclocking if you're into that sort of thing. I know with AMD's latest boost algorithms, a lot of people are choosing not to manually overclock these Ryzen CPUs anymore, but still they want a really good cooler nonetheless because they want their CPU to stay cool and last a long time. And this is a really good option for that. The only real downside here is that this can be one of the loudest coolers out there. It's probably the loudest one that I've ever tested. 
but at the same time, its cooling capacity is just so good that there's no reason to push it that far. You should be able to find a really good balance of noise levels and cooling performance with the X73, and I think that makes it a really good option. It sells for about 180 US dollars at full price, but uh, it's been on the market for a little while, so look out for deals. I'm gonna put the purchasing links down in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and turn on notifications, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.